Ladies and gentlemen, Kage here with some news from the Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls public test realm. Just want to give you guys an update as there was a patch earlier in the week that Blizzard released. I just haven't had a chance to cover it. You may have already seen some of this, but for those of you who haven't, uh, allow me to give you some updates on what's been happening with Greater Rifts. So I speculated on the video where I talked about Greater Rifts, what these were going to be for. Because really what we were seeing were rifts that increased in challenge as you got higher and higher keystones, higher difficulties, which were great, but we didn't really see a change in reward structure based on going higher and higher in the difficulty. You start off at level 1, which is probably equivalent maybe to normal mode, which is pretty easy. And then you start getting tougher and tougher, and it didn't seem like the legendaries you were finding were really any different, or the amount weren't any, diff any different. In fact, I started finding some lower or less legendaries as I went further on. And, well, let's just face it, that's pretty much RNG. The big piece of the puzzle was missing, and that was legendary gems. Because, as you saw when I failed a rift, there was a vendor there that could update jewels. Well, they finally turned legendary gems on the PTR... Now, I went through with one other party member when I did this. We went through a rank 1 Greater Rift, and we got to the end, and the boss dropped two legendary gems for each of us. I don't know if this is guaranteed, and I'm not entirely sure how the upgrading process works yet. So I'm going to, I'm recording this now as I talk about it, and then I'm going to go through a Rift and kind of show you guys as I go through how this process works. So first you can see this is the Bane of the Powerful. This is one of the two gems I got. These can be inserted within any piece of jewelry with a socket. All right, so you can't put it into armor, you can't put it into weapons, only rings and amulets. This means that you can put these on followers, which makes them very powerful. So you can have three on yourself and three on a follower, which means you can make some very interesting builds if you're playing solo. This one in particular gives me 30% increased damage for 20 seconds after killing an elite pack. I have to kill the whole thing, including all minions, to get that. But 20 seconds of a 30% increased attacks of 30% uh, increased damage is pretty time. nice. You can see there is a secondary effect, and it's grayed out, which says increases damage against elites by 20%. And as you know, uh, if you're going into things like the Stone of Jordan, where you're trying to get additional damage against elites, th that's pretty nice. It can really help you kill those bosses easier. But this requires what is called rank 50. And the only way to update these is to fail a rift, which has some consequences. So I'm going to talk about this real quick, uh, and then I'll go into the rifts and confirm my speculation here. But let's talk about this right now, just looking at this as we see it. What concerns me a little bit is that you have to fail a rift. So... If you get to a point where you're having a hard time beating a Rift, and maybe even beating a Rift Guardian, there's a real chance that you're going to have a very difficult time killing the Guardian in order to get the vendor to spawn. Which means that if you think you're going to fail the next level in Rift, you think you're, you might be able to beat this Rift Guardian, but you might fail the next one, you may want to consider letting the timer tick down if it's getting kind of close. Because if you think you're going to have a hard time with the next difficulty level, you might want to just spawn the vendor now. And I think that's kind of a shame, because really you should be rewarded with being able to get to the next ranking. So what I'm almost thinking that they might want to do is when the timer expires, make the vendor spawn at the entrance of the rift, or maybe where you were when the timer ran out. So you can still decide to kill the rift guardian if you so desire. But they should at least reward you with saying, hey, you got to rank 15, great, here's the vendor, he's going to stand right here, because that's where you were when you the timer ran out, and you can... Continue to beat the Rift if you want and get the loot from the Guardian, or just take your gym and go, because you don't know if you're going to beat that Guardian. Just because I, I think that it kind of sucks to be able to get that far and then not be able to do something with your gems. But as you can see, the guess so far is that you have to get at least level 50 in the Rifts in order to get that second ability, which will allow me to get a level 50 rank of the gem. So this should be infused with whatever level I get to. And since I could only get to like level 15 or 16 last time, that means I'd only get a level 16 gem. Now here's the good news about this, is even though I couldn't upgrade this to get both effects, is the gem should become more powerful the higher in ranks it gets. You kind of want to think of it as gaining stacks. It's going to have a certain amount of power at a base level, and then it's going to have a certain amount of power that it gains as it levels. So this might gain, as you can see, the 20 seconds. That is the part that's in blue. That's the part that's variable. 
So what this means is as I get higher ranks in this gym, I'm not going to gain damage, but I might gain how much time I get a damage boost. And that's actually pretty nice, because 30% is really a good amount of damage. So if I increase the time that this, is, that this allows me to have that damage, I will have it for longer, and might even get it to continue by finding another elite pack before it runs out. So these things look really cool. I like the fact that they're fairly powerful. I like the fact that they're upgradable, which gives you a reason to go through higher in rifts. Some of these, though, may be too strong. We'll have to see. I mean, we're still balancing out. Right now, they, the, the gyms are basically being put in. The rewards are going to be balanced out later in the PTR process. Right now, they just want to put the gyms in. They want the gyms to work, and they want us to play with it then they'll start worrying about power. So before the patch comes out, we'll start seeing that, I'm sure. Let me show you the other one I got. This one I got, pu I put into this Kimmel's Gold I found. You can see that this one increases damage against enemies under the effects of crowd-impairing effects by 20%. Made it a natural choice for the build I had because I'm running a lot of cold damage. So that pretty much gives me, as my build suggests, a permanent cold a week, which is more uh, CC for and more increased damage. At rank 50, it would gain an aura that reduces the movement speed of enemies within 12 yards by 30%. You can see it synergizes with itself. So it'll produce an aura that reduces their speed, which is a crowd control effect, which means you're going to be doing more damage to them. And in this case, we can see that the damage of the gym is what goes up. Now, you cannot salvage these. I'll go ahead and demonstrate that right now. You cannot salvage gyms. You can sell them, but as you can see, this is only for 576, so they don't sell for much. At least not at rank 1. You can remove them, and as of right now, there doesn't appear to be a price set to it. So 226.10.128. So you can remove them, and as of right now, there's no price. I imagine that will change. It will probably be equal to the price, if not more so the price, of removing one of the highest end gems. So just know it right now, there is no current cost for it, so we can play around with it and move them around at will. But of course the powers aren't turned on, so even though I have this in my slot right now, I'm really not gonna gain that additional damage. All right, so those are the rewards. Let's show you what's a little bit different inside the Rift itself, because there's been a few UI changes and I think it looks much better and I think it's easy to understand. Uh, so first and foremost, the icon for the Greater Rift Keystones has changed. We can see that it actually shows the number on it. This number, it, there are icons for every number up to number 100. And then I believe there's an infinity symbol. So if you get higher than level 100, since these, key, rifts, key, these rifts are supposed to go higher and higher, uh, I imagine that that will be used if you manage to somehow get higher than level 100. Now, the rift difficulty levels have been retuned so previously i had about half of my timer left when i beat a boss and rank one and then i got a rank 10 keystone the last time i did this i did better than that and i got a level eight keystone which means the difficulty has been it looks like the difficulty has been increased per level on these stones now i did show this off before that there's now a ui on the nephilim obelisk I'm going to show that uh, not only do we have this now, when you put a keystone into it, you'll notice the color actually changes. So you see that I put in a regular keystone fragment, and it starts to glow, glow yellow. If I put in a greater fragment, you'll see it starts to glow purple. So even, even though this is pretty obvious to see the icon, there's actually a little bit of a glow that shows up on the UI, which is kind of cool. I always like that Blizzard includes those kind of polishes. I'd also like to show, and I think that this is going to be fixed a little bit later, when you enter a regular rift fragment here, you used to see five glowing rift fragments circle around and then combine and enter the obelisk. This was because we needed five fragments. Well, now you only need one. So you'll see the animation has been removed, and then boom, there was a quick burst of power, and then done. Unfortunately, I really miss the old animation where they circled around and combined, even though it doesn't make as much sense now. I'm kind of hoping that maybe they'll add some other kind of animation or something like that, because as of right now, it doesn't seem all that interesting. In fact, the obelisk sits there and doesn't do anything for a few seconds, so you almost can't be sure at first that it's working. You're looking at it like, okay, any time now, and then you get the burst, and then it's finally done. So hopefully that's just right a holdover right now, and they will be giving us new animation for that. 
Now I'll show you some of the changes to the UI, which I really like. They make it very easy to understand what's going on, even if you haven't read anything about these greater rifts and how they work. So you see the icon over here has uh, it's got a little bit of a cosmetic upgrade. And as I kill things, what you'll notice is they've changed the color as well. So the color used to be kind of red. It's now kind of purple. And now you'll notice the enemies, instead of dropping those red orbs that we saw before, they're now dropping these purple orbs with skulls in them. So it makes more sense now. Instead of this red, weird, glowy-looking thing that you don't know what it is, now you see, hey, I killed an elite, and now they're dropping these skulls, which are probably like souls. You'll also notice that when I pick them up, the... UI over here will flash. You'll see that it goes through and it shows you you picked up a soul and so it increases the death counter. So it's very easy now to see what it's all about. You now know that those circles, those icons that you're picking up are directly associated with the timer. With the previous UI elements, you would I, I picked up those floating red orbs, didn't really know what they did until I paid close attention to the bar, and I noticed that, oh, okay, my bar is actually increasing as I pick those up. It wasn't immediately obvious. There was no glow, there was no flash, it's just, it moved. And that was it. And that was my only clue there. Uh, and as far as I could tell, I didn't see any documentation on what exactly that meant but I was able to at least figure it out. Now the UI elements work together, and Blizzard's always been very good about that. They try to make UI elements, or try to even make skill sets and things like that, that make sense, that work together, and if they work together, there's usually some kind of thematic element that ties it all in. In this case, they've changed the color of the bar. And that seems like such a minor thing, but think about it. The bar is now purple. The orbs they drop are purple. They show skulls. Well, they tied together. So the bar itself is tied to the same color as the orbs that are dropping. And the orbs have an icon in them that kind of show off why you got them. It's because you killed something. And then the flash of the UI says, hey, this is what you're directly affecting. So let me get to the Rift boss. And then uh, when I get to him, I'll go ahead and start back up here for you guys. So you can see once again... Uh, the rewards for beating a level one and see if we get more guaranteed gems. That's going to be the big thing. Obviously, this is only going to be the second time I've been in a greater rift. Unfortunately, I did try to do the rank eight rift that I got when I beat the rift guardian last time, but the game crashed in the middle of my rank eight rift and I lost it, unfortunately. Now, that's something that's going to be a concern for talking about it. Uh, disconnecting from a greater rift makes you lose it, and those rift fragments are not easy to obtain. I had to do several runs in a normal rift in order to get my greater rift fragment for level 1, and then after I did beat the level 1, I finally got my rank 8, and then I lost it. So I had to go back and find another one, level 1 rift stone in order to progress. So that's not cool. That, that's not cool at all. I'm really hoping that either the stability issues are worked on, or if you leave a greater rift, that maybe there is some way to get back to it. Like, even if the timer doesn't go on, like, if, even if I lose the timer, the next time I join my game, if the rift could be open, since I didn't close it, and I didn't beat the rift guardian, so that way I could go in and get my rewards of beating the rift guardian, that would be kind of nice. And then I would, of course, just uh, talk to Auric to close the rift. Maybe something like that. Honestly, with normal rifts, it wasn't really a big deal because normal keystones are fairly easy to get. Now it's even less of a deal because it only takes one of those fragments to make a rift anymore. So normal rifts, you know, if you lose it, it's like, oh man, that sucks, but I mean, oh well, I can just make another one. These greater rifts, they're a lot more important now. Now, it was PTR, so, you know, connection issues are kind of expected to happen. But there are times when live will have connection issues. Uh, it's, uh, I would say it's fairly infrequent, but you want to have some protection against that if it were to happen. Because let's let's face it, if there's like a night on Battle.net where things are going poorly and things were fine a moment ago, but all of a sudden Battle.net just started having some terrible, terrible problems, and you had just laid down like a Rift 50 to try and upgrade one of your gems, you're not going to be happy if you lose that. So I'm hoping they think about that and maybe ways to deal with that. All right, so we've got to deal with Rib Tickler here, or I'm sorry, Blighter the Rift Guardian. Killing him pretty quickly. You can see that my Rift, my timer was at about 
and I beat it in about 7 minutes 33 seconds. I got a Greater Keystone 6 this time. So I, I got the best of 8. So if you clear it with better than half, you might get 8. You might get 10 if you can beat it in about 25%, I would imagine. Okay, now that I've beaten it, I've got my Fragment for 6, and I did get a Gem. I also got some Bracers, so there's some good Magic Find chance here. The Gem I got is the Enforcer. Legendary Gem increases the critical hit chance of your pets by 20%. At the 50th rank, the pets are unkillable. Now, that's a massive boon. Now, this is one of those Gems that I mentioned that I think might be a little bit too powerful. Because as it gains in rank, that critical hit chance approaches 100%. In fact, I think it might actually get to 100%. And that might be a bit powerful compared to some of the others. But many of these gems are actually super powerful, and I, I'm not sure if this is going to be a big deal. But this is pretty nice. I do like these. Uh, there is one concern I have, though. We've talked in the past about gem sockets being mandatory for certain things, like weapons. What sucks about weapons right now is that if you don't have a socket on your weapon, it feels useless. Because the crit rating or crit damage on the socket is so important now. Alright, my apologies. Apparently my screen froze. I can't tell if it's an issue with recording software, or the latest drivers, or both. Uh, so I'll look into that. Now, unfortunately, what that forced me to do was to close my game, which means I couldn't talk to Auric to get the additional experience and money that I was supposed to get for closing the rift. So, again, that, that's one thing that can happen. It doesn't even have to be Battle.net that fails. It could be something else that fails that prevents you from getting that. So there's no protection against that, which kind of sucks. So at least I got the Keystone. Well, let's go back to what we were talking about. I'm talking about gems being a bit too important. Now, gems on gear is very important for things like, you know, the rings and the amulets. I mean, they're okay, but mostly in the armor and the pants are they very important because you get three slots here, you get two slots here, and getting the highest level gems means you're getting quite a bit of stats out of those. So gems are very important, but when it comes to weapons, there's really only one gem, and that's pretty much the emerald. And it kind of concerns me about that. Now, the good news is they're adding in an item that allows you to socket weaponry, even if it doesn't have a socket, and even if it already has six affixes on it. So you could theoretically have a seventh affix, which is that additional socket. So they've got a method for doing that. But now with these new legendary gems, we're looking at sockets on your jewelry being important. Even more so important than it's ever been. So... What I'm hoping is that this item that can add sockets, maybe they open it up so that it adds sockets to maybe anything instead of just weaponry. Just because of how powerful sockets are and they almost they pretty much feel required. Now for the armor, it hasn't been too big of a deal because I found armor that's just as useful without sockets and you can always re-roll sockets. That's not a big deal. That's not really a big deal. But for jewelry, it's really important because when you're going to reforge gems or reforge your uh, rings and amulets or anything like that, they require gems to do so, based on what type of item it is. Uh, so it takes an amethyst for both of my ring and my amulet. And that's just for one reroll. Now the good news is, is it's only, uh, what is this? This is a flawless imperial amethyst, which takes three imperial types, which is one Imperial is three Marquis. So it's only like a third level up. Not too hard to get. But you have to re-roll multiple times if you don't get what you want. And it can be difficult. So I get a little concerned because I think that sockets are maybe just too powerful. And the the thing that concerns me about that is they always try to make it so that one stat doesn't really trump everything. For example, it improved attack speed, got nerfed pretty heavily because of how powerful it was. Now, to be fair, it was excessively powerful simply because it affected your regeneration, your survivability, as well as your damage. So it pretty much did everything. Now, if it would have been just one thing, it might have not have been so bad. So I'll leave that up as a point of discussion to see what you guys think about sockets. Are they too powerful? Are they maybe just powerful enough? Should that be the one stat we have to concern ourselves with and have to constantly re-roll for? So I'm wondering what you guys think about that. But I wanted to at least bring that up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to try and do my rank 6 and see if I can do rank 6 and above. 
and find out just how far I can get this and what will happen with the gems. And I will record each boss kill to see if the gems I get from them are better. So just, just like the previous discussion, even with these difficulty restructurings, uh, we can see that there are some things that may prevent you from getting a really good score or a really high rift, and that can just be, again, a product of RNG. The whole random number generator gods can completely screw you over, and if you didn't get a good density roll, you might have a problem. So having good movement skills in the earlier rifts so if you're not playing with a party, right? If you're playing in a party, it should be easy because you pretty much split up, kill everything as quickly as possible. That should make it, that should maximize your killing time at any point. If you're playing solo, maybe if you're doing a low level rift, you want to change your skills out to have more movement oriented abilities. Because just like before, you still can't change your skills or your items when you're in a greater rift. So it's very important that when you go into a greater rift that you have exact on you exactly what you want. Now you can, well, we'll go ahead and do this here to showcase this, you can still port out, so if you need to get out, you can. And you can change things up there, but it does make it... I need to go back. It makes it difficult to do it on, you know, you can't do it on the fly. So we'll go out, and what I'll show you is another thing too, is the color of the rift. This is actually pretty cool. The rift is now a vibrant purple as well, and that ties in with the rest of the UI elements. So now that I'm out, I can go ahead and change some things up if I want to and include a movement skill. So you do have that ability. You just can't do it while you're inside the rift. And you can just port right back. But keep in mind, you are timed, so every little bit that you spend out is going to count against you. Alright, I've managed to make the level 6 Rift Guardian appear. And it looks like it's the same guy. Who's probably going to die fairly quickly. Now you see I went from 6 to 10, so I got a nice jump in 4 ranks from where I was. I was about half, I believe. So I've got 1 keystone, or 1 stone, and 1 legendary. So when I got the 2, I was working with another party member. Now, last time when I did these greater rifts, whenever we did any rift, we got 2 of the subsequent rifts for being in a party. Now it looks like you only get 1. So whenever you beat a rift, even if you're solo or in a group, you can expect to only see one. Now here's the one I got from this. This is the Invigorating Gemstone. Uh, while well, under any crowd controlling effects, it reduces damage taken by 30%. And the secondary effect at rank 50 is heal for 20% of maximum life when hit by crowd impairing effects. So that's pretty nice. That's actually a passive effect or a combination of some pa uh, passive effects I know Barbarian had. Uh, so that's pretty cool to see. And you could combine those. So no matter how high your Rift ranking is appears, it looks like these are going to stay at rank 1, or at least that's what I'm seeing so far. Alright, we hit rank 10. Need more time. Fighting Agnodox. We well, can see that it really hasn't felt like it's gone up too much, but we'll have to see once it gets closer to 15, 16, to see if there's been a big difficulty shift one way or the other. I assumed the difficulty would go up. The difficulty may have actually gone down. They may have wanted it easier to get closer to 50, but I don't know for sure because 50 is going to be one of those things uh, for these stones that you're really going to want to get. That's going to be very important. It, so far, every single one of these things that I've killed has dropped me a legendary gem. So this is why running rifts and being able to advance in rift ranks is going to be very important because this is where you're going to get these. As far as I know, there is no other way to get these legendary gems. So, I was over 50% that time on my timer. And we see I got a rank 13, so I went up three levels with that. 9,425,000 XP, 76,000 gold. And, of course, we'll talk to Auric and see how much that goes up. 23,562,000 and, of course, 115,000 gold. Now, keep in mind, uh, this is a change that I didn't mention earlier. But it was mentioned by Blizzard, and I think it was fixed previous to this last patch uh, is that they did reduce the amount of experience that greater rifts give in some form. I forget exactly where they reduced it, but they said it was giving too much. It still seems to be giving quite a bit. I feel like I'm getting a good amount of experience, but it's just not as much as it used to be. So here's another one of the gems that you can get. Still rank one, despite uh, the rift I was in. This is the Gogok of Swiftness. 
25% chance on hit to increase your attack speed by 2% for 3 seconds, and it stacks up to 10 times. 25% is a good chance. Now, this is one of those that, that doesn't look like it would need to be increased all that much to be useful. 25% is still a pretty good 1 in 4 to increase your attack speed in 10 stacks. Uh, of course, getting it to 50 will give you 2% cooldown reduction per stack, so that's very nice as well. So if you like your attack speed and if you like your cooldown reduction, this is going to be a gem for you. Approaching the end to rank 13, things are moving along smoothly. Having difficulty deciding whether or not the difficulty curve is the same or not. I mean, they, they restructured it, so I don't know exactly what they did to it. They didn't say exactly what uh, or give a kind of breakdown. Now, part of the problem, though, is they did give me some new skill synergies to work with. And I could be very well just working better with the skill synergies that I have now compared to what I had before. That's always a possibility. It doesn't look like this is going to be much of an issue here, so we'll beat this at 13. Take a look at the rewards and make sure that I still continue to get a guaranteed legendary gem. Alright, I got 15 because, because that one took me a bit longer. And I did manage to get a set piece, a hand crossbow, and yep, another gem. So you can see this one is the gem of Efficious Toxin. Poison all enemies hit for 1,000 weapon damage over 10 seconds. So that's 100 weapon damage per second. And, of course, that will get upgraded. So it doesn't seem like a lot now, but it will go up as it gets leveled. And, of course, at rank 50, all enemies you poison take 10% increased damage from all sources. So that's really nice. I can see that working fairly well with some builds, especially with Witch Doctors, getting you some additional poison damage and, of course, making enemies take more damage as you poison them. I can just see that working very well with, say, Acid Cloud. Something I found amusing while running through rank 15, shield actually dropped on the ground uh, as I'm running through. There is still a bug here on the PTR with greater rifts. Uh, certain levels in the rifts still drop items. Uh, not from monsters, though. It's from destructible objects. So I thought I'd point that out. That's probably something they will fix prior to live. If it doesn't get fixed, then no, it is a typically a minor thing. And I'm sure that the infrequent, the infrequency of the drops will not be a problem or hindrance. Because uh, you can pretty much, I would expect, be able to just pass up whatever drops if you don't necessarily need it. I would hope they would fix it because thematically, since nothing else drops anything... Uh, these zones here from Act 5 should match the tone of everything else. Now, it's coming down to the wire for me here for number f 15. So, it's honestly, I'm hitting about the same stride as I did before. Um, and I think that might, honestly, I do think that that means the rifts are probably just a tiny bit harder. Just because I do feel that I have a lot more killing potential with the build I've put together with this latest patch, uh, since I have a lot of cold damage and now some new cold skills that I didn't have before. Of course, part of the problem I'm having is not really with survivability, although I have died once or twice. It has been mostly with killing speed, like making sure that I'm killing fast enough. So now I kind of have to pull away. So there are some enemies that are still very difficult to deal with um, from a health perspective. But a lot of it is I'm just not killing them nearly as quickly as I used to. You can see that the timer is just getting is cutting it really close at this point. Might be better off if I still if I could use the gym that I have put into my amulet. I did lose a little bit of damage from that because the previous amulet had cold damage and this one does not. But as you get more and more legendary gems, I have a feeling that you're going to be getting through these quicker and quicker. I mean, I've already got two gems that I think will synergize very well for the build I have. And that's one is increased damage to anything under an, a crowd control effect, and the other is my pets do additional or have an additional crit chance. And I could just combine those to get my cold damage up, and since my sentries are a major source of my damage, those will start doing more damage 
I would just have to get a socket for one of my rings, and then I could probably start clearing through these even quicker. So the good news is, is because the a lot of these gems are fairly powerful, and especially if you have some kind of piece of jewelry with a socket in it already, uh, you should be able to start really pumping up your damage right away, really. It's, it seems like this is something that you um, should be able to do without too much issue. But that is, of course, contingent on having the sockets and not needing sockets. Yeah, we're cutting it close. I will be killing this guy. Sheesh, I remember when that used to be a one-hit kill. Thank goodness for armor from dexterity. All right, rank 16. So I'm only gaining one rank. You can see I had 50 seconds left. I seem to be getting a legendary and a gem with every single run. So before, it felt a little more like it was random. But now it seems like I'm guaranteed a legendary each time. I mean, that's that's been my experience so far, as you've probably seen from the rewards. One legendary, one gem. I'm sure there's chances that more gems can drop. Let's take a look at the gem I got. I got Zay's Stone of Vengeance. Damage you deal is increased by 3% for every 10 yards between you and the enemy hit. So this is great. This, this would honestly be kind of nice for even me on this build uh, using centuries uh, as long as i keep my distance i can do more damage and if i rank 50 it's a 30 percent chance on hit to stun the enemy for one second which allows you to get away so what i like about these gems is they actually have some really nice combinations they work the first ability is nice on its own and then it gets a second ability that works or synergizes well with the primary ability that it was already given well ladies and gentlemen it looks like this is it the rng gods did not favor me this time i was ahead of the timer for a little bit but then rapidly fell behind. Two things stopped me. One was a death, and the other was not being able to find the exit right away, running out of monsters to kill. So there's definitely a lot that can work against you. The good news is I'm very close on the kill timer, so even though everything's expired, it's not going to take me much longer here to spawn the Rift Guardian. We'll take a look at the final reward for rank 16, and we'll take a look at how the vendor works. So, so far, it feels pretty good. I'd say the difficulty is pretty fair so far. Obviously, you're going to want to look to other people for higher level rifts. I know there's a video on Diablo fans that showed a monk getting through uh, rank 100. But that was on the old system, not the new one. And that was using uh, Exploding Palm, which has since been adjusted. Uh, nerfed, actually, is the proper term. And uh, we'll be I'll be probably looking at that when we get closer to release because it is a, a change that could possibly be reverted, but I don't think it is. Just because the amount of health increases that happen, I think they're going to avoid uh, making it the way it is now. All right, so level 16, you can see that was my final rip depth, and it gave me extra experience and gold. 9 million go uh, experience and 76,000 gold to be precise. All right, so from that, I got a gym some bracers and a ring. The gem I got is the moratorium. 50% of all damage taken is instead staggered and dealt to you over three seconds. That's pretty nice. So assume you take a fatal hit. Something hits you right away and you die. If you take that over three seconds rather than right away, you have a chance to either heal yourself, use a skill to prevent the damage, or in some way escape having damage happen to you over time that's really an interesting thing especially since it's going to continually do that to all damage you take so rather than take all of your damage right away you're taking it staggered three seconds not a lot of time but as we can see the three seconds is the variable hill the variable here so that means you can increase that three seconds to be higher and higher as you go forward the secondary skill at rank 50 is a 10% chance on kill to clear all staggered damage. So not only do you have the staggered damage, so you're taking half damage as it is and then staggering the rest. And then 
if you get this to rank 50, there's a 10% chance you kill something, that damage isn't even going to apply anymore. So if you've got multiple stacks of damage, you can clear it. That's pretty powerful. Very powerful defensive item. Alright, so we have uh, Urshi here. And we can go ahead and see, here is the gym upgrades. There's a 43% a forty three percent chance to upgrade any one of these gems that I have. Now, it doesn't look like it'll include uh, what I have here in my necklace. Now, I'm going to give you a quick warning. I'm not going to do it now because I want to actually see how the vendor works. But I've been warned that if you leave the rift, even through teleport, if you like use a town portal to leave and try and come back, let's assume you don't have the gem on you and you leave and try and come back, I've heard the vendor will be gone. I'll go ahead and test that as well so we can be sure. But what you might want to do is make sure that you have the gym on you that you want to upgrade. Now that includes on this, like I really like this gym. I want to upgrade it. I may want to have it out of my gear to upgrade it. So let's go ahead and talk to Urshi again. And just make sure we'll take a look at what is available to upgrade. Okay, so it is in here. The Bane of the Trap. So I was wrong. I was staring it right in the face. So even the gym that is in my gear is upgradable. So you want to make sure that the item is in your inventory or on your gear at the very least. Which should be easy because you go into a greater rift, your inventory doesn't matter, right? So you should always at least have it on you because you don't have to worry about picking stuff up until the very end. So just at least make sure that you have the item that you want to upgrade on you in some capacity rather than in your stash. So I've got a 43% chance to increase it. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to actually increase the pet critical chance. I want to see how high that goes at this rank. Because that can increase my damage substantially. So I'm going to click on that, Enforcer. 43% chance to upgrade. So I can only guess, and I'll try and get some more information on this as well, that this upgrade chance will go up as you get higher in levels. So do keep in mind we only got to rank 16. And let's see what it does. Does it infuse the, in, imbue the level that we got to? So I'll go ahead and hit Enforcer. I'm going to hit Upgrade. Upgrade failed. So that's unfortunate. So we didn't get to actually see what kind of experience that we could get. So I can't upgrade anything else. Uh, so all right, I'm going to have to look at that. We're going to have to try it again so that I can show you guys how you upgrade gems because that's going to be important. We're going to want to know exactly how many levels you get if it succeeds. All right, ladies and gentlemen, while I was gathering some information about legendary gems and how to upgrade them, a uh, patch came to the PTR and has changed a few things. First and foremost, I mentioned before that it was no cost to remove gems from your jewelry. That has changed. We now see that it's 50,000 gold for at least a level 1 gem. So both of these that have legendary gems in them are 50,000 compared to this, which is 175, and that has uh, the highest level gem in it. So we do now have a cost. I do believe this cost will probably be changed over time. Uh, will probably be increased before the patch goes live. What I really expect to see, though, is as the gym becomes more powerful and I get more ranks into it, the cost then goes up based on the level of gym. So there's that. Secondly, greater rifts have been changed just slightly. It used to be you go into a regular rift and you would gain one of these, a greater rift keystone for rank 1, and you would just start from rank 1 and work your way up. Well, now when you complete a regular rift, you are given one of these, a trial keystone. You can see it has the infinity symbol, and it unlocks greater rift level zero, which is basically, a, it's a trial run that gives you a bunch of waves to defeat. I haven't done it yet, but this is what I've seen described. You get a bunch of enemies that you have to kill, and the higher in waves you get, the better the keystone you get. So here I would get, normally I would get level 1 keystone, I would go through it, and if I did well, the most I ever got was 10, but that was before the last patch where they changed the rankings. Uh, after that it was level 8. So I would go from 1 to 8 right away. And here I'm going to get a trial that says, okay, you are registered to do Greater Rift level 10, tw uh, 15, whatever. Uh, now, there is a bug associated with this at the moment, in which the difficulty level does affect the trial and it shouldn't this is supposed to be a difficulty on its own it's supposed to start off like the regular rifts where it starts off kind of in normal and steadily progresses until it figures out what difficulty mode you can handle 
Now, if you wanted to get a level one keystone and you just wanted to start from level one, you could just intentionally fail. Not, not really fail, but just not kill a wave in time. And that's how I understand it to work. We're going to go ahead and go through and we're going to give this a test. We're going to go ahead and put this Greater Rift Trial keystone in here. And I am sitting on Torment 1 because I know the bug. All right, so we're taking, it looks like, into Diablo's Realm of Terror. And we must defeat waves of enemies, which... Okay. There we go. All right. A little bit of slowdown. So there was a timer countdown before the enemies appeared, and then, of course, there's a timer for each wave, and we can see I didn't complete that one very quickly, but should be able to clear them a bit faster now that I've got all my turrets up. They even give you some of these healing wells to help you out, should you need them. So yeah, there we go. That round was a little bit better. So yeah, it's just a bunch of waves. The better you do, the better keystone you get. So we're, I'm going to go ahead and complete a few of these. Now it is rumored that each wave counts for roughly one level of Greater Rift Fragments. So we'll try and find that out here in a moment. Let's see how far I get. Now if that's true, I should probably be able to get to rank 10, roughly. We'll have to see what kind of enemies it throws at me. This isn't too bad at all. But what I'm interested to see is that there's going to be some kind of reward for completing this. If it's basically a shorter version of a Tier 1 Rift. Oh. Okay, so I got to rank... F or Wave 5, it would appear. And now I go to Auric back in town. So it doesn't open up a portal for me to go back. really think it probably should. But I guess I can just use my town portal to go back. And let's just kind of quickly explore this. It does appear to be the exact realm of terror that Diablo spawns, except for it has four healing wells if you need it. Now, that's interesting. Since you're timed, I guess you could go from one well to the next if you need to. But it only gave me five spawns or five waves to deal with. So it doesn't seem like they're necessarily required. So we'll talk to Auric. Your skill has grown. And rank 5. So yeah, each wave I completed gave me a rank of Keystone. But I didn't get anything granted out of that. So I mean, honestly, I would probably just rather go ahead and get myself a rank 1 and complete it. And get the rewards from going up through that. That's the thing, right? The more greater rifts you go through, then the more rewards you get because you're constantly killing Rift Guardians. And, as the last time I checked, I was getting a Legendary Gem off of every Guardian. Alright, so I will continue to go through these Rifts. And I will try and determine if anything else has changed that I need to update on. And then we'll go through the leveling process for the Legendary Gems, hopefully. Alright, 8 minutes 53 seconds uh, sees me getting a rank 12 keystone from the rank 5 that I had earlier. And we can see that, yes, I once again got a legendary gem. So it appears to be still guaranteed, although that is just one instance, so I'll continue going. Uh, so here we have the Wreath of Lightning. 15% chance on hit to gain a Wreath of Lightning, dealing 500% weapon damage as lightning every second to nearby enemies for 3 seconds. Effectively known as the Conduit Rune. <laughs> All right, well, under the effect of the Wreath of Lightning, you can gain 25% increased movement speed at rank 50. All right, cool. So, got something good here, got rank 12. We'll go ahead and pick everything up, and we'll continue to see how this works out. All right, 636. Remaining, we go from a 12 to a 17. And yet another legendary gem drop. Of course, this time also a set piece, which is kind of nice. We'll quickly show that off for anyone who cares. A Marauder's Carapace, which is kind of nice. And the gem I got is the Taiguk. Gain 1% increased damage for 3 seconds after spending a primary resource. This effect stacks up to 10 times. Gaining a stack refreshes all existing stacks. Interesting. So you gain damage for resource spenders. And you gain 1% increased armor for every stack when you get it to rank 50. 
Very nice. So very good for offensive builds, uh, ones that use more efficient resource spending abilities, it would appear, rather than ones that dump it all at once. Difficulty 17 cleared with 1 minute 28 seconds to spare. And yes, another gem. This time we got Simplicity Strength. Increase the damage of primary skills by 25%. Primary skills will heal you for 2% of your maximum health on hit at rank 50. So if you're doing a generator build, that's a good one to have. All right, and since that one took me longer, I didn't jump near as far, although I did jump a little bit. I went from 17 to 19, so I skipped one rank still, even though that was getting pretty close, so I'm surprised it knocked me up too. All right, moving on. Well... Rift difficulty 19 was as far as I could get, although it says your final rift depth was 20. Interesting. So I guess it counts rift level 0 as a level, so it's saying 20 is a total, even though my difficulty was 19. So, yeah, cool. 20 depth, gets the experience in gold. It looks like now they're also including the upgrade chance at 47%. All right, so what I'm seeing here is that the last time I did this, I was on a rank 16 difficulty. And I've gone up three difficulties. In fact, I could have gone up further, but I had some setbacks on this one. Just didn't perform as well as I should have and just ultimately didn't get it. Three rank increases gave me 3% increase in upgrade chance. So I'm guessing the higher you go, the higher the chance is. It may be a one-to-one -one correlation as far as to exactly what the base number is. That would suggest a base level of 27 or 25%. Hard to say. Because it may not scale linearly. So I'm not sure on that. That's only guessing at this point. Uh, so there we go. Level 20. We did get, it looks like, another gem. Yes, we did. And we got a uh, pain enhancer. Critical hits cause the enemy to bleed for 500 weapon damage as physical. And at level 50, you gain blood frenzy, granting you 2% increased attack speed for every bleeding enemy within 20 yards. Which is pretty nice. All right, lots of blood, lots of bleeding. So there we go, we're going to go ahead and talk to Urshi. And it looks like I don't have to have the gems on me to upgrade them, because some of these gems are still in my stash. Uh, so I have my Pain Enhancer here, I've got the uh, Tuguk and, the, of course, the Invigorating Gemstone. All these I know are in my stash. So good news! You don't have to have the gem on you that you want to upgrade. It will count what is on your character, what is on your stash, and what is in your gear. Because I do have two pieces in my gear uh, for critical hit chance of my pets and for dealing damage against uh, crowd controlling effects. Which appears to be working. I believe that's why I got a little bit further is because those have been enhanced. So let's just go ahead and take a look at these. I want an elite pack. All right, there we go. Bane of the Trap. It would be nice if there was a marker that showed where it was, whether it was in your stash or in a piece of gear or something, so I could easily pick them out. I'm thinking what I'm going to do is take this Simplicity Strength and try and upgrade it. I've got 47% chance. I want to upgrade it. It's at level 25. It's at level 1, has a 25% chance. And it failed me once again. 47% chance is not my lucky percentage, apparently. So I'm going to have to do it all over again. So hopefully I'll be able to show you guys an upgrade and how much of an upgrade you get down the line. Just means the video is going to be delayed a bit further. My apologies. All right, from a rank 1 rift, yet again, guaranteed drop. We have Marinade, the teardrop of the Star Weaver. 15% chance on hit to smite a nearby enemy for 1,000 weapon damages holy. And at rank 50, smite a nearby enemy every 5 seconds. So you have every 5 seconds happening and a uh, smite happening on hit as well. For 1,000 weapon damage, pretty powerful gem. All right, at Rift difficulty 6 on this next run, I cleared it with about 8 minutes, 49 seconds to go. No gym drop this time. I did get up to rank 16, though. I jumped it up pretty high. But no legendary gems dropped. Now, it is a possibility, because I haven't gotten a duplicate of any gems, go back. that I may have found all of them that are currently dropping, and it won't drop a duplicate. Maybe it will for a different character. But that means I'd have to put these in, on a character and not in my stash. 
An interesting theory, to be sure, but one I don't have any proof on. This is the first time a gym has not dropped. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. It's a total of 13 gems that I have. So we'll try it again and see if another gem doesn't drop on the next Guardian. Alright, completing rank 13 with 4 minutes 36 seconds. Gained a keystone to go up to 16, and once again, no gems are dropping. So I can only assume that I have hit the point where I have all the gems available. My guess, purely speculation at this point, is that once I upgrade one of the gems, I might have a chance of getting that gem again as a level 1. Uh, this is very interesting development. I mean, obviously you can't equip a gem twice in equipment, right? You, you, the stacks won't double up because they're considered legendary. They're pretty much unique equipped. So that means only one of the gems, even if you happen to have one, more than one on your gear, only one's going to take effect. You should be able to get more than one, though, by virtue of having different characters. Like, what if I wanted to have this here, the, uh, the ability to increase damage to enemies that are cold? Now, maybe the items that are in my gear won't count. Like, if I wanted to get that gem, maybe I'd have to do another character in the rifts. In fact, I might actually go and do that. Take one of my keystones and just throw it in here. Or farm another keystone. And try it on a different character to see if I get the gem that drops. So I'll take a look at that, and of course, we'll report back as I move forward. Well, it looks like level 20 is decisively my limit. But, getting to level 20 did allow me to get the upgrade chance up to 49%. So hopefully now I'll be able to show you a gem that gets upgraded. Alright, so level 20, of course it says 21 because of level 0 being included in that whole thing apparently. Alright, let's continue. See, what did we get? There are no gems dropping still since I have all of the gems. Or at least that is my theory. I just don't think it would go this long without dropping it unless that were the case. All right, so we're going to go ahead and try and do it again. We've got a 49% chance. Oddly enough, the upgrade failed text is still here from the last time I tried to upgrade a gem. So, all right, uh, what I'm going to do once again... Let's see if I can't get myself a little bit further... We're going to increase the damage against enemies under effects of crowd control effects by 20%. So we're going to go ahead and hit upgrade. Upgrade succeeded! Two ranks gained. Alright, so, well, there we go. We can now see that uh, it has been improved. It is in here. Uh, it will not tell me the rank here because it is uh, inside the gem, but I can at least mouse over this and see that it is rank 3. It has gone from 20% to 21% meaning that it gained half a percent of damage for every rank and level. So I have to keep going through these to constantly get these upgraded, and it looks like I gained two ranks from that one, but it's hard to tell without more empirical data exactly how many ranks you would get based on how deep you get, or if that even matters. But at least I was able to show you that's how it works. You get to the end, uh, the higher in the level of a rift you get, the higher chance you have of an of getting an upgrade chance. And I honestly kind of hope they, they increase it a little bit, uh, really, because it's, you know, doing two in a row and having them both fail, both at 40% or higher, and spending a lot of time, because you have to spend a lot of time getting these tokens, because the rifts, regular rifts, don't seem to drop them very often. I can't really tell what the drop rate on them is, but you've got to spend time doing a regular rift. Then you've got to do multiple levels of whatever greater rift you happen to get to. In this case, I usually do five or six, I think, with uh, each one being about five minutes. That's about a half hour. Let's just say it's about a half hour just doing the uh, greater rifts, and that's not including the time it took to get the rift token. And then getting the chance to upgrade it and then having it fail. The first time, okay, right? But then the second time in a row, the third time here, I was kind of sweating it out, thinking it wasn't going to happen. I do like the fact that the legendaries appear to drop with every single rift you do. But I'm not too sure about the not only getting one of each, unless I test it out with another character. I don't mind that simply because these are really good pieces of power to have, but you can only have three. You can't have them on a follower now. 
uh, that has been updated. I know I may have mentioned that earlier in the video. I don't know if I would have edited it out by this point or not. Uh, but no, you can't have these legendary gems on a follower anymore. So you can only have three at a time. And then you've got to upgrade them. So it's nice to know that you can get the gems that you want reliably and then work your way on upgrading them. So the time invested is not in getting the gems. The time invested is in upgrading the gems. So that makes sense to me. It means that someone with not a lot of time can still get a gem to upgrade their power. And it means that someone with a lot of time to invest can typically get them higher and higher, get them up to that rank 50. Now, took get my, got myself two levels here, so that means i got to do this 25 more times in order to get it to 50 in order to get that second rank. But it looks like how far I get into the rift isn't going to matter in far as far as how many ranks I get. So I don't have to get to rift level 50 in order to get a level 50 gym. I just have to try and get to it and then ultimately get to the point where I can say, okay, upgrade the gym, and it says, okay, you've gained a couple levels in it. So that's just going to take time. So ladies and gentlemen, keep in mind that anything I've talked about here in this video is subject to change. This is on the PTR after all. The PTR is nowhere near live. I expect us to have quite a bit of time still before it comes out. But I wanted to at least show you how this works, how the upgrade process works, and at least see if it was related to the difficulty of the rift or not. It doesn't appear to be. At least not with the data I have. I haven't been able to find anything as far as a forum post that might suggest otherwise at this point. Actually, uh, I was having a hard time finding out how the upgrade process in general worked. So that's why I also wanted to do this for you guys to kind of see that, to see how this upgrade happens. I could find information on how many points that got upgraded per level, and those were on some official blue posts, but I couldn't find the exact how many levels do you get for the depth of a greater rift you get. Does that even matter? All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, one last addendum here before I close out the video. I was able to get the proof I needed that you can get a gem more than once. I was a little concerned that you couldn't. Yes, you can. Uh, you just need to go and get the gem on a different character. So I've picked this up. I got this on my monk, the Bane of the Trapped. As you can see, the damage uh, against enemies under the effects of crowd impairing effects. Uh, I do have this already on this character here in this ring. And I'm going to go ahead and just remove it from this ring. And also what I want to do is see if the cost of removing a gem has increased because of rank. We see rank 1 gems are 50,000. This rank 2 gem is also 50,000. So I'll go ahead and remove it. And you can see there it is, or it's a rank 3 gem. So it's the same price. It is not going up per rank. I expect that will possibly change, uh, but we'll have to see going forward. Again, this is still PTR, and there's still a lot that can change. So there you go. You can see that you can have two of these items, but if you want to have more than one, you have to get the item on a different character. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.